about you know <laughs> you know how sugar has been demonized and I was saying to Lane do you think though most people don't know how to track macros or just don't do it so I was saying you know like yeah sugar you know for the average day person it just makes them crave more sugar they're not counting macros so at the end of the day they're they are um, still like they're so afraid that if they have any sugar you know they're gonna go off the wall but Lane was saying some smart smart shit yeah I mean like one of the things is you know I think the overall message of like so let's say something take something like paleo right eat more meats less processed food more fruits and vegetables the overall message is fine but when you start demonizing foods and you say you can never have sugar you can never have dairy you can never have whatever legumes they're against you know, some, some of these things like when it becomes a religion that's when I have a problem with it because yeah sugar has some downfalls and then it's not very filling um, it's gonna leave you you know a little bit hung. like if you're eating most of your fruits from sugar you're gonna be hungrier you're not gonna be right. as fulfilled you know, so yeah you want to eat enough fruits and vegetables so you're still but, you're gonna eat over your macros basically is what it comes down exactly to. And my, my problem with it is the demonization of foods because listen when I went to grad school I wanted to find magic foods I did like because if I found magic foods shit dude I'm I, like I'm gonna I'm gonna You'd be, be rich. a gazillionaire I'm, yeah. a, I'm a rich right and I remember sitting at a, a, a party for uh, the, the Division of Nutritional Sciences at the University of Illinois and one of the professors over there who did a lot of research on high fructose corn syrup which has been demonized in the media right yep and the other professor and him were talking and, and, and he said you know yeah it, you know high fructose corn syrup the, the professor who did the research on it says you know, it doesn't seem to be any more lipogenic than, than you know, other carbohydrate. And the other professor goes, well, that can't be true. Like, look at, you know, what about these? He said, yeah, well, the people just overconsume calories. Right. And this is a guy whose whole life was based off of research on high fructose corn syrup. Interesting. You know? so, so all those, all those, you know, forks over knives or, or I don't know. There's so many on Netflix that I've seen and I leave thinking, oh my gosh, I have to cut out this, this and that. If I ever have hydrogenated oils or high yeah. fructose corn syrup it's like I, I I'm just ruining my body and I agree that again getting back to the fact that those things are gonna I think it's undernourish your body so again if that's all you ate well, you want to limit them you yeah know? you're gonna be my there, there's no micronutrients you could also say in terms of they're not minimal but you know you gotta think about this like with nutrition everything is nourishment right, right. It's calories it's nourishing but you know what are you getting along with it but you know like you said like we've talked about if you take care of all your you know, it's a budget so if you take care of your mortgage and your and your retirement your all the all the responsibilities and then you've got money left over then you can blow it on, fun, on fun stuff right so f food's the same way like if you're eating enough calories that hey you get enough fiber in you hit your protein and fats you or, or you hit your protein you hit your your overall calories you know you you get your micronutrients in those sorts of things if you got 200 calories left over to go blow on some ice cream or some skills or whatever then what's wrong with that you and know? i think that's that's the kind of the you know in that in all the takeaway messaging from these like those those documentaries you see on netflix it's the people that have success stories what have they done they've cut they their cut calories, calories. Yeah. and that's that's why you know ketogenic diet yes it was funny i, I post on twitter I, and i post a study that showed that when you equate for calories and protein that a ketogenic diet does not have a metabolic advantage over a non-ketogenic diet. It's just, it's not any better. Now, what, what somebody replied to, so that's what I say. What people hear is, Lane said keto didn't, doesn't work. <laughs> so I had a guy message me or tweet at me and said, well, I lost 50 pounds on keto. I said, yeah. well, of course you did. You, you cut out calories and you were consistent with yes. it. And I, never, I didn't say it didn't work. Right. What I said was it wasn't better. Now, was it better for you? Like, were you able to be more consistent with that? Is that more sustainable for you? If so, then it's better. Mm -hmm. But if that's something that you just can't stick to, because I want to see him in five years. Right. right. Like, can he continue to follow that ketogenic diet for five years? So. And there are some people I feel like that just they have it. addictive personalities. And some people out there, if they're going to have that you know and, and I'm kind of one of them they have those addictive personalities that they, they if they if they feel like they're not limiting themselves they have no control over their life they have no control over over and there are some foods out there that obviously elicit a response correct me if I'm wrong yeah. that are gonna make you hungrier if you eat those things in too much quantity they're gonna leave you unsatisfied as opposed to eating something with more fiber in it and that's I think what Lane's getting at is like there there are no matter how you shake it or dance it you can't get away from the fact that calories are calories and when you eat a certain amount they will affect your body no matter what if you're right. eating those amounts you don't defy a law of thermodynamics right and again like i said you know i don't have any problem with you know people saying that like yes sugar has some definite downsides and this yep. sort of thing what i don't like is people 
you know, these documentaries or these people that have come on Rogan. And yeah. I, Joe, I love you. Like, I love your show. I listen to your show even before all this stuff. Right? Yeah. Like, other people are the ones who are like, Wayne needs to go on there. Yeah. Um, but what I don't like is this demonization of foods of that somehow it is just inherently bad. Mm. That it's not a calorie thing. That the their sugar is just inherently more lipogenic, which is it's, it's just... It's not true. The research yeah. isn't there to suggest that, you know, and, and I, I, I used to think that, you know, and I looked at the research and it, it, I'm sorry, it just wasn't there, you know. I always tell people, don't hate me, hate the data.